Heavenly Father, we are here together in the name of Lord Jesus Christ on the first day of the week. Uh, we want to receive your precious word because all your words are spirit and life, Lord. We want to receive your words and to fill our heart with your words. That is your thought. Forsakening our thought, we want to fill with your thought and so that we may be able to obey your words and follow you, Lord. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Yeah, let me read the book of Psalm chapter 94, okay? O Lord God, to whom a vengeance belongs, O God, to whom vengeance belongs, shew thyself. Lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth, render a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things, and all the workers of iniquity oppose themselves? They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger, and the mother and the fatherless, Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Understand, you brutish among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the eyes, shall he not see? He that chastis the heathen, shall not he correct, he that teaches man knowledge shall let he know. If the Lord knows the thoughts of man that they are a vanity, blessed is the man when thou art chastens a Lord and teaches him out of thy law, that thou mayst give him a rest from the eyes of adversary until the pit be digged for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. But judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord hath sinned, my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, My foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, and help me up, held me up in the multitude of my thoughts within me, as thy comforts delight my soul. Shall the Deuteronomy iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth uh, mischief by law? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But the Lord is my defense, and my God is the rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yeah, the Lord, our God, shall cut them off. Yeah, it's the words of the Lord, okay? It's the word of the Lord. What do you think? Okay, let me read the book of Romans chapter 11. Book of Romans chapter 11. Verse 25 through chapter 12, verse 1. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of the mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit. The blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant, unto them when I shall take away their sins. 
as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as you in times a past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so have they also now not believed that through your mercy they, are, they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable are the, his judgment and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor, or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recom recompense recompensed unto him again. For of him, and through him, and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. As you see, today's, you know, uh, the subject of sermon is God's thoughts and human thoughts. In other words, God's thought and your thoughts. There are three kinds of things in man. Heart, within heart there is thought, within thought there is imagination, walking together. Through the main passage that I read of today and the words of God in the Bible, we hope that you shall we shall realize deeply how God's thought and human thought are as different as heaven and earth, and how deep God's thoughts are. Why God came as the king of Israel two thousand years ago and kept all of them in unbelief in him. Even today, 2,000 years later, have he kept most of them in the spiritual prison. They don't believe in Jesus. God made them not to believe in. What a mystery it is. Our human thought is a mystery. Unfair. And why he has given mercy on the Gentiles, just like us, by keeping them in unbelief. Were they to be miserable for the past 4,000 years by using the Gentiles and killing them so many times, including in the Holocaust and uh, Second World War by Hitler? Could he say the Gentiles, if he put the chosen nation in a miserable tragedy? Only through making damn tragedy he could save us? It's very hard to understand that, a human point of view. Yet can you say God's gift and calling have no regret? Yeah, he chose his people. He made all men and women. No regret? But at the time of Noah, God regret, you know, he made, you know, because he made, you know, men and women. What that means? Man without the Spirit of God hears the invisible God's thoughts in the words of God just in vain. You know, all the words of God seem to be in vain, you know, to the heart of man. A psalmist lamented how frustrated he was. He's saying, Remember how short my time is. Wherefore, hast thou made all men in vain? Why you made them born and let them die, you know? 70, 80 years is old, even infant, baby, children, you know, why? In vain. But God 
says that the thoughts of man are in vain. The law knows the thoughts of man that they are vanity. Which one, which one is right, God or man? In other words, which one is right, God or you? God spoke to Adam, the first man who was made by his own hands, after he sinned against God, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. What in vain? He made all men and women with the dust. And ask and then go return to dust. What, what the, what's the meaning? Why they allow the born? It's impossible, you know, to understand the thoughts of God. Okay. Yeah, just, you know, keep going on. Uh, continue to hear, right? Until you understand what is a God thought. From then on how many people have been born in the world for 6,000 years and returned to the dust in vain. Why so many people still are born to be Adam's descendants even though they do not know that they shall return to the dust sooner or later? How much vain is the thought of man? Even then can God say his gift and his calling without repentance? God spoke about the difference between the thoughts and the thought, thoughts and his thought and thoughts of man through the prophet Isaiah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not thither, but waters the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereof I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountain and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the a briar shall come up as the mother tree, and it shall be to the Lord for the name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Yeah, it, it is a voice of God. Came from coming from the thought of God. Apostle Paul, who realized how deep the thought of God is, is testified. Oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways are past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? <laughs> Nobody can counsel God. Or who has first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again. So many people you want to receive first and you know, give him again. But reverse. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Yeah, it is understanding of Apostle Paul. I just bless all of you to have the same kind of understanding of God's thought. When he wrote to the Corinthians, he testified of how he had come to know God's thought. They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, even Eve hath not sinned. I hath not sinned, nor ear heard 
neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him, but God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yeah, the deep things of God. Without the Holy Spirit, no way to understand his thought. For what man knows the things of man? Save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knows no man but the spirit of God. Unless you receive the Holy Spirit, you know, there's no way to know God. It can be religious people come to church on Sunday, you know, and attend the service, you know. But there's no way to know God. Not knowing, his, not knowing God, not knowing his thought, you know, there's no way to follow him, obey him, to be saved. Apostle Paul testified how his thought was changed since he received the Spirit of God. Yeah. Yeah, he just confessed. Since he received the Spirit of God, how he has been changed. Listen to him. But the natural man, that means without Holy Spirit, natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is not judged of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord, but he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Yeah. You have the mind of Christ to know God. Jesus said to the Jews without the Spirit of God, He's saying, It is the Spirit that quickens, the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. As Jesus said, no one can understand the words of God that are spiritual and invisible physically through the reason of man. No way. Even PhDs, you know, can understand the words of God without the Holy Spirit. But God wants everyone to know him. Yeah, he wants everyone, including you, know him. The natural man born as Adam's, you know, offsprings, descendants, are bound to follow uh, the lust of the flesh that contains the nature of sin. Therefore, the ways of sin are inevitable to live in curses and death according to the law of justice which is death, therefore, we experience the judgment of God in various ways, whether they are Jews or Gentiles living in the world. Also, God uses his servants for people to realize the judgment of God so that they are repent and return to him. Even he wants you to repent and return to him. That, what, what is it, repentance? Oh, my thought is wrong. You know, hear the words of God. His thought is right. I'm wrong. I repent. That is repent. Okay? Repent, repentance is different from regret. Also, when they return to the Lord Jesus Christ, He gives the Spirit of God to make them Him know God. Do you know God? Examine yourself right now. Yes or no? Not in the middle. That's right. God sent Jesus Christ into the world to give his spirit to all. He wants to give his spirit to those who believe in him and become a family of God to make God their father. God had prophesied beforehand through the prophet Isaiah that the spirit in Christ who came as a son of David, the son of Jesse, the spirit. He prophesies like this. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch, a branch in a bee is kept a letter. Branch shall grow out of Israel. Branch means Jesus Christ. 
That means Jesus Christ was born in, a, in the genealogy of, genealogy of David. And the spirit of God shall rest upon him because he's God. The spirit of wisdom, understanding, and spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of uh, the fear of the Lord. Whosoever receive the Holy Spirit, you know, fear the Lord, you know, they tremble before the Lord all the time. God has made the plan for man and all things to return to him through Jesus Christ. There has been temporary interruption for six days. There are 6,000 years, right? Six days for God. It's the same table. But for us, 6,000 years. In heaven and earth, because of rebellions of Lucifer, that is the devil, Satan, in heaven. But as he created Adam and said to him, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion of the fish of the sea and of the fowl of the air and over everything, every living thing that moves upon the earth. God will fill the heaven and earth in the kingdom of God with renewed man through receiving the Spirit of God. Apostle Paul, who realized the deep things of God and witnessed what the plan of God was. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the foolish of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. The, what, the things in him is church, all of us. Men and all things, they came from the Lord Jesus Christ will eventually return to him through the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, even our bodies are his positions. The Bible says, for you are a bought with a prize by his blood, okay? And therefore goes glorify God in your body. Don't commit sin. Glorify him. And in your spirit, which are God's. Therefore, the man who received the Holy Spirit through the blood of Christ is to submit to God the things of the body and mind while living on this earth. Apostle Paul testified that such a life is a reasonable worship service. Different from Sunday service. Reasonable worship service that God is pleased with. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Real service is what? During your life, you present your body as a living sacrifice because your body, even your body is not your own. You're owned by the Lord Jesus Christ, whether you know it or not. You shall know it if you don't know right now. I bless all of you to understand what is the thought of God. Or the thought of God is written in the words of God. Without, you know, study words of God, there's no way for you to know the words of the, the God's thought. Even though you read it, unless you're born again in the Holy Spirit, there's no way to understand his word. I bless all of you to understand through his wisdom and understanding. God bless you all. Amen.